Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Saviour's Dollingstown for worship this morning. And you've joined us on a very important day. We call this Mission Sunday, where we're lifting our eyes up from our own local context to think about what God is doing throughout our world. So we pray that you are greatly lifted and inspired in our worship today. Just some announcements before we uh, get going further in our service. Uh, Kids Kids Church Goes Live uh, happened last week, uh, session one of Forky's Great Escape, and it will uh, happen on the Facebook page, Kids Church Facebook page, uh, straight after this service at 11.30. So make sure you tune in to Forky's Great Escape, which happens uh, for the next number of Sundays after morning worship each week. I want to remind you as well that the last, we would imagine, the last drive-in service of the summer is next Sunday. That's the 30th of August. And we'd love to see you in the field, 28 Dromore Road. And we'd love you to invite as many people as possible to finish off the summer with a big worship celebration in the field. So please do join us next Sunday at 3 p.m. Now, as well as Forky's Great Escape happening on Sunday mornings, we also have a mini holiday Bible club happening next weekend. So that's uh, 6.30 on uh, our parish Facebook page and YouTube page, 6.30 Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So 6.30 in the evening for the kids, uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And again, the theme is Toy Story. And you'll maybe hear a little bit about that at the end of our service as well. Now folks, as I've already said, today is Mission Sunday uh, and this morning we're going to be hearing a, a little bit about Adopt a Child. Uh, we're going to have the, the uh, Ireland uh, coordinator Scott Ballantyne leading us in prayer and we're going to have Hervin uh, Fushikali uh, sharing with us in, in a in a a bit of a presentation later as well and and Hervin is from Albania so we pray that you're really blessed as you hear that but this evening at 6 30 our focus is going to switch to the global church in a sense as we hear about what God is doing through IFES the International Fellowship of Evangelical Students so please do join us to hear tonight from Lindsay Brown from IFES um, and really, we're joining with the uh, fantastic Bangor Worldwide Missionary Convention. And I'd really encourage you to, to look that up on Facebook, engage with all that's happening uh, at the Bangor Worldwide Missionary Convention that's this year happening online. It's a wonderful, wonderful event, and you'll be really blessed if you tune in to hear more. But we're really praying that today your focus and your heart would be lifted. It's so easy to become a little bit small in our thinking, especially during this pandemic and during this time of lockdown. But I really sense that there's going to be a blessing as we lift our eyes up to other places. And one of those places that we want to be uh, really conscious of at the moment is Lebanon. And we'll have seen what happened in Beirut that man-made catastrophe where the, the scale of suffering is, is, is incalculable, where you're hearing about 200 dead, 375,000 people homeless, 5,000 still hospitalized, and this only the tip of the iceberg. So as well as opportunities to give to the Ministry of Bangor worldwide, you'll see them flashing up uh, at different times at the start and end of our service. Uh, we also want to encourage you, do look at our, our parish web page and there's an opportunity if you would like to give through open doors, uh, there's a diocesan appeal uh, to really help and support for the people of Beirut. So please do prayerfully consider what you could give to help uh, people in Lebanon at this time. Let's move into our service in just a time of confession prayer. Let's pray. Lord, your great commission sent us into the world to become disciples, fishers of men, but often fear, 
apathy and indifference seem to stop us dead in our tracks and hinder momentum. Lord, as well as becoming disciples, we pray that as fishers of men and women, that we would make disciples. Lord, when our momentum stalls, we ask for your forgiveness. And we ask that you would help us overcome everything that hinders and stops us from doing your work. Help us to be faithful and to be full of your grace. We pray for strength to build up your community in this area. But we also pray for generosity and intercession to see your kingdom built right across this world in Albania, in Beirut, in every nation on this earth. Lord, we pray as we enter into a hymn of praise now that our whole lives would be proclamations of your goodness and of your faithfulness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And let's sing. Yeah.
Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning everyone. So you just watched a short video there of me blowing out the seeds on a dandelion head and I actually have one with me this morning now. It was quite hard to find because in perfect timing the storms came and destroyed them all but I managed to get this one and I used to love picking dandelions when I was younger. I used to play games like he loves me, he loves me not and my cousins used to tell me that you could tell what time of the day it was using just this dandelion head. They said that you had to blow out all of the seeds and however many blows it, it took you, that would then be what time in the afternoon it was. Thankfully I'm not that gullible anymore and uh, definitely wouldn't you recommend using that as a way of telling the time. But I saw a dandelion like this in my estate this week and it made me think of a mission. And so I want to share a couple of thoughts with you this morning about what kind of seeds it is that we are carrying and sowing and where is it that God is blowing us this week? When I was younger, I used to think that these types of dandelions were covered in fluff. But actually what these are, are loads of little seeds. And there's a story in the Bible that talks about seeds. It's a parable that Jesus tells in Matthew's Gospel. And he talks about how a farmer goes out and scatters seed on the ground. But when Jesus is talking about seed, he's not talking about literal seed, like the seed on this dandelion but he's talking about the gospel. And we as Christians are people who have received the gospel and who have accepted God's rule and reign in our lives. And so just like seeds bring life and growth, when we receive this seed of the gospel and this gift of salvation, the gift that Jesus came and laid down his life and rose again so we could be reconciled with God, and become new creations, the people he created us to be, saved from darkness into light, just like seeds bring um, life and growth. When we receive Christ, he gives us life in all of its fullness and he helps us to grow more like him. And Jesus went on to tell his disciples that if they receive him and abide in him, that they would produce fruit and he said, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control. You see, the fruit that we produce in our lives will disperse seeds into the lives of those that we meet. Because we not only carry the news of this gospel, but we also live it out in our actions. And so I'm wondering this week, have your actions been loving? Have they been kind? Have they been patient? Um, have they been good? You see, the type of fruit in our lives um, will determine what type of seeds that we're planting into the lives of others. And you see, just like all of these little seeds are joined together on this dandelion head, as Christians, we are all connected together and we are all part of God's family. But just like the seeds on this dandelion head aren't meant to stay there forever, they get blown away. Um, we as Christians are not meant to hear this beautiful news about the gospel and keep it to ourselves and only mention God in church or in our Christian circles. But just like these leaves are dispersed by the wind, we are commissioned by God to go out and to share the good news of the gospel with those around us. You see, Jesus said, it's the sick who need the doctor, not the healthy. And so it's those who don't know the gospel, who have never had this seed planted in their hearts or minds. Um, 
And so it's those people, wherever it is, whatever sphere of influence you're in, it's those people who don't know the gospel that you're there to plant that seed in. And so as we thought about um, what kinds of seeds it is that we are carrying and sowing, I want us to think about where is it God is blowing us? Where is he sending us? See, after Jesus gave the disciples the great commission to go and make disciples, he also gave them a helper to help them fulfill the command that he had given them. And so just after Jesus left and went to heaven, um, he told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit. And just like the wind from my breath allows these seeds to go and to be dispersed, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to fill us um, and to send us to those who need to hear this gospel message most. So that we can not only proclaim it with our mouths, but demonstrate it with our lives too. And I wonder, where is it that God's Spirit is leading you this week? I wonder, who is it that you're making a disciple of? I wonder, where is the Holy Spirit prompting you to share the good news of the gospel? And for me, at the minute, I can't go very far. I'm sure many people are like me and are in my situation. I can't go very far because of COVID. So for me, that's looked like sharing the good news in my home with my mum and my dad and my sisters. But maybe for you, if you're a parent, it's about sharing um, the gospel with your kids. It's about explaining um, things about God to them. Maybe it's if you're working from home. Maybe it's listening to that wee prompt from the Spirit that tells you to text that friend, that Bible verse that you've been putting off. Wherever it is, I wonder where God's Spirit is leading you to share this good news this week. And there's an example of one of the disciples, Peter. And Peter was a disciple who messed up. He was someone who denied Jesus three times, said he didn't know him, he had nothing to do with him. And yet when Peter is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, he goes out to this massive crowd and tells them all about God, tells them what he's witnessed, and thousands of people end up getting saved. And you see, it was the seed of the gospel that was planted in Peter's life as he lived with Jesus, who was literally the word made flesh. And as he listened to him and he saw what he did for him, um, Peter then went and proclaimed this news to others, planting seeds in their hearts and in their minds. And so just like seeds bring new life and growth, the message of the gospel has the power to change people's lives. It has the power to heal them, to set them free, to help them grow into the people that God created them to be. So let's share it with others. Let's not keep it to ourselves, but let's go out. Um, with the power of the Holy Spirit, your voice may be shaky and your feet may be trembling as you do that, but God's Spirit will help you to go out and to share this good news with those around you. And so just like the wind carries the dandelion seeds to the ground, I pray that this week, that the Holy Spirit would empower you and direct you to carry God's beautiful gospel message to those who need to hear and receive it most. In the darkness we were
Thank you to Celine, thank you to Rebecca, and also thank you again to our worship team for leading us there. We're now going to have a time where we hear from Adopted Child, both uh, from Ireland, but also from Albania. So we'll now have our prayers led by Scott Ballantyne, and then we will hear a presentation and a preach from Hervin. Greetings to you all in Marilyn Parish this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to share in your worship. My name is Scott Ballantyne. I am the uh, Irish coordinator of the Living Water Adopted Child Ministry and uh, also a board member of our ministry in Albania, which will be the focus of our thoughts uh, this morning. So let's pray. Father God, we worship you this morning because you are worthy of our worship. You are he who created all, who owns all, and who sustains and upholds all by his mighty word, the one to whom all owe allegiance. We thank you for our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, his once for all sacrifice on the cross to redeem us from the penalty of sin. And we thank you that one day, if we're believers, we'll stand before you clothed in his righteousness, not because of anything we've done, not because of our own merit, but because Jesus took our sin in his body on the tree. Thank you for the mission you have given your church to make known to the nations the gospel or the good news of Jesus our Messiah. Thank you for the ministry of Living Water Adopted Child and for the ministries you have established through this organisation in the nations of Albania and Guatemala. Thank you for the last 25 years of ministry in Albania when much has been accomplished and many have been helped and brought to faith during that time. But Lord, we're looking to you now for the next 25 years as we try to respond to cultural shifts and, democratic cha and demographic change in that nation. Thank you for the new leadership you have brought to us, Pastor Hervin Fishikati, our new Albania director, and Pastor Arian Chunai, our new senior pastor. Bless both these men in their endeavours as they seek to work under your guidance in extending your kingdom in the hearts of the Albanian people. Give them wisdom in regard to the course they should chart to take us forward in an increasingly stormy world. Thank you for the opportunity to help many who have such great physical needs in Albania due to poverty, which is multiplying because of the COVID pandemic. 
Thank you that by your spirit you are awakening many to their spiritual need at this time, when governments and sector authorities can't provide the answer to mankind's innermost needs. Lord, as we seek to get more involved in education in the future, to open up new opportunities for people to get out of poverty, help us not to forget that the gospel must remain central to all we do. Lord, as we seek to share the good news of Jesus with children in our Bible classes, which are attached to our feeding programs, in home visits, in the eight villages where we work, in the gospel meetings amongst adults in our villages, we pray that your spirit will convict of sin and that many will receive the gift of faith. Help our Albania team as they faithfully sow the seed week by week. And Lord, in your good and perfect time, please reap a harvest of souls. I want to especially lift up this morning uh, our work in the village of Katyel. Thank you for the church there in that Muslim village. Thank you for our pastor there, Lefteri, and his wife, Putcha, for their tireless work in visiting homes to share about Jesus and what he did at Calvary. Thank you for the witness of the many who come to the church to attend Bible studies, prayer meetings, youth meetings, ladies' meetings, Christian film nights, outreach meetings, something on almost every single night of the week and many events during the day as well, Lord. But Lord, it's not about the amount of activity, as good as it is to see, but the number of changed lives and willing hearts to take the gospel to the rest of the village and the surrounding area. Bless them in their endeavours. Encourage them as they produce fruit. Pastor Arian says there's an explosion waiting to happen. I pray that that will come to pass. Lord, pour out your spirit in these villages so that many will repent and bow the knee before you as Saviour and as Lord. We ask all this in and through the one who first loved us. Amen. Greetings everyone at Mugger Lane Parish Church and thank you for giving Adopted Child an opportunity to be heard. I would like to divide my presentation in three parts. Who we are, what we do, and how can you be involved? The first one, who we are. We are a Bible-based kingdom-seeking, disciple-making ministry that is reaching out the next generation of Albania. The biblical basis for our ministry are found throughout the Bible. In the Old Testament, as God was establishing the nation of Israel, He was giving an example of what God's kingdom would look like. Israel was going to be His people, and God was going to be their king. As such, they were going to be a light and blessing to all the other nations of the earth. It was in this establishment that God introduced the law, which regulated the relationship between man and God, and men with each other. Through the law and the covenant, God was establishing a nation through three components. First, knowing God, and not just had knowledge, but a relationship with God, which in today's Christian terms, would be called discipleship. The second, care for one another, otherwise known as social care and justice. And thirdly, a community where everything is expressed in worship. This community today is the church. The Ten Commandments, the book of Leviticus, Deuteronomy, not only express the heart of the law, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might, and love your neighbor as thyself, but also put a great emphasis on passing what is to be established to the next generation. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 till 9 says that these words that I, the Lord, command you today shall be on your heart. You shall then teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign at your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them at your doorposts, at your house, and on your gates. This is what God's kingdom is, and how it is to be established and lived. In the New Testament, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus the Lord and the King asks of us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. At Adopt a Child Albania, it is our core value to strive for the establishment of God's kingdom in our context 
at the heart of all the children and people that we reach by doing what is right, his righteousness. This leads us to our second point, what we do. In a broad sense, we are seeking to establish his kingdom. Originally, Adopt a Child did this by offering social care primarily through feeding programs and evangelism. A few small church communities were taking root in spite of being predominantly Muslim towns and villages. Yet, as we celebrate our 25th year of ministry, in spite of the challenges of COVID-19 pandemic crisis, we are so thankful for what the Lord has enabled us to accomplish. 25 years to date, many of the children we are originally reaching and discipled are now equipped and in leadership roles. We are excited as Adopt a Child has entered into a new era of expansion, driven by a triad of ministry based on the kingdom principles that I mentioned earlier, which are composed of social care, education, and church planting. As these three components funnel to each other, we see more hearts open to the gospel through the various forms of social care in which we do feeding programs, we have life skill programs, we offer dental care and medical care. And as children are one to faith and discipled, they then progress and are equipped through our school of theology and leadership, Christian education, and eventually pioneer new church planting, churches that are planting churches on new frontiers. We're excited that through this triad of ministry, we are presently reaching 1,300 children in eight hard-to-reach, difficult roads, remote areas. We have approximately 100 students in our leadership Bible school. And we're so excited because through our students, there have been over 60 new churches planted, which in return have opened so many new frontiers of opportunities to reach even more children. So this leads us to the third part of the presentation. How can you be involved? Before getting ready for this speech, I did a little bit of research on some UK costs on basic comfort needs, coffee. And I found out that an average type of serviced coffee would approximately be three pounds, three British pounds. Now coffee in our today's society can be associated with necessity and comfort. On the other hand, mission is to be associated with sacrifice and leaving your comfort zone. So the question for us today is how much are we willing to sacrifice and leave our comfort zone? The cost of 10 served coffees in UK will sponsor one of our children for a whole month of feeding aid, medical care, life skills, education, and more importantly, will help us disciple and equip some of them into disciple making and church planting. The question for us again is, as we are challenged to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness minimally, can we make a long-term commitment of valuing God's kingdom over our discomfort and of sacrificing 10 coffees monthly? This takes us to what I call the minimal involvement for God's kingdom in Albania, sponsorship. We seek long-term sponsors that will partner with our staff, churches, and volunteers and help social care, discipleship, education, and church planting. In principle, your money has more value if it's invested in God's kingdom for two reasons. The practical reason, because in the rural, remote, and marginalized communities of Albania, it can do a whole lot more than just 10 coffees a month. It feeds children. It gives them better medical care. It gives them life skills. But more importantly, it has a spiritual reason as well. It has an eternal implication. These children will be eternally grateful to you for enabling the gospel to them, the power of God for salvation. Other ways of getting involved are short-term mission trips so that you can see what God is doing through your sponsorship. Another 
very appreciated way of getting involved is becoming ambassadors of adopt a child this way you can tell our stories you can recruit others you can mobilize your own church and potentially even having your church partnering to do a new church plan with one of our students depending on your gifting we would also love to have you teaching at our school or at our discipleship programs on an end note Romans 10 13 15 says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved but then it continues how shall they then call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach except they be sent and how shall they preach except they be sent in this unprecedented time of crisis in our ministry in Albania we're primarily thankful for two reasons first that like never before the people in the areas we minister today are very open to the gospel they are calling upon God and they are being saved as life becomes more challenging and poverty is multiplying and the governments and the politicians do not have all the answers people are lifting their eyes to the heavens for God's help and protection in spite of the lockdown state the local governments and municipalities in the areas we operate not only have given us permission but also have requested our help so that we can help the poor families or villages so we are thankful for the open door to the gospel of Christ the second reason we are thankful is you our sponsors and our supporters you who with your prayers your generosity and continuous faithful giving keep enabling and empowering us to minister and reach out to the poor children of Albania as the scripture says but how shall they hear if no one is sent to preach we are thankful and hopeful that through your faithful support many times even sacrificially and beyond your abilities we can still go on and reach out the people of Albania and in particular the poor children so thank you for listening and please visit our website or contact us to know more how to get involved to God be the glory may God bless you
Folks, I hope that you are greatly, greatly encouraged. Please remember that this evening at 6.30 we will uh, be hearing from uh, Lindsay Brown uh, from Wales uh, who will be sharing with us what on earth is God doing. So what's he doing across the world uh, which should really bless and inspire you. So please do join us for that. And do remember as well that you can give uh, to mission worldwide if you visit worldwidemission.org forward slash donate um, and also you can contribute to that very necessary uh, aid for Lebanon through our Open Doors Appeal if you visit our website or look on your parish email for further details and remember as well for our kids that there's an opportunity to register for next weekend in the Holiday Bible Club in order to get a special pack delivered to your door. And you can do that again using your parish email link or looking on our website. Let's just close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, it has been good to be in your presence, being reminded of your mission. And we are reminded that it is not the mission of men and women, but the mission of God. Lord, make us brave to share your gospel. And I pray over my friends and my brothers and sisters now. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Hi everybody. So at this time of year we would usually be getting ready for Holiday Bible Club but unfortunately with coronavirus we're not able to do that in the way that we usually would. But we're really excited to let you know that we are going to be launching a toy filled action packed Holiday Bible Club weekend on the last weekend of August. And so from Friday the 28th to Sunday the 30th, we're going to be going live each evening and delivering you a Toy Story themed 
holiday bible club program there'll be lots of bible stories there'll be cool crafts there'll be memory verses and loads of things for you to enjoy and you might even see some characters that you recognize some who wear hats like this so stay tuned onto our facebook page because we'll be releasing more information about it this week and um, we really hope that you can join us and look forward to seeing you all then.